I did notice this week, this episode had elements of the original Crab Logger episode, which pretty much featured the same design of the original machine as seen in this episode, and it had elements of Cry Wolf, as that episode featured on two children as the main focus of the rescue. The Firestone supersonic cannons, along with the fire repressant grenades, are used for the first time since Season 2's Inferno, and because of the Grefnel Tower situation, uh, that episode was never broadcast onto, uh, onto terrestrial TV, but it was available for streaming from Amazon Prime. Now I have to wonder, you won't put it out on DVD, but you will have it up for streaming. Can anyone answer that for me? Honest, you know, sincere question. And we learned that Scott used to be a rescue scout as well. A falcon, to be exact. And I suppose, considering the type of character and leader that Scott Tracy is, it would make sense that he would have these basic qualities as a leader, but also the same type of regiment and mental discipline that could only start from the beginning as a rescue scout. So it's interesting that they would include that into his backstory, but at the same time, when you think about it, it also makes a lot of sense. Everyone turned in a great performance this week, along with Matthew Gilmore Wright and Hannah Monker, who really capture how children would act in this situation if they were in this in real life. And I really dug the emotion from Rasmus Hardiker with his delivery of Scott, when the character is looking at Jeff Tracy's desk with a lot of emotion, and the vocal delivery that he's able to put out is like you really believe this is how Scott would act because you know for five years watching this show not just the audience but it's the characters of what if what if you could bring Jeff Tracy back I think, in a sense, it's taking a a mindset of this desk has been empty, you know, more than long enough, and like Scott said at the end, let's go get Dad. Because there's there's been such an, an emotional connection from not just the characters but uh, the voice actors and the fans that have tuned in for the last five years to see this generation of Thunderbirds and we're almost at that length of knowing that Jeff Tracy comes back into the story. But as we all know, this is where the trade-off comes in. There may not be a fourth season. We'll see. As the late Ben Hurst once said, sometimes all it takes is a phone call. So we'll see. But so yeah, voice cast, perfect this week. Uh, what to say about animation? The model sets are as articulate as ever. Visual effects animation, stellar. And I really like how illuminous the Thunderbird craft are when they're reacting with the reflection of the, the flames on the hull, really give it that orange and yellow glow. You know, that, that, was, that was something special. I felt like the dam was a visual cue to the original Crab Logger episode, as the sole purpose of that rescue was to stop the machine from reaching the dam so that it wouldn't flood the town. So far, I think this is the first time that we've seen all four Tracy brothers suit up on the island, and with the way things are possibly going, this could be the last. 
This one is probably more coincidental, if anything, but I felt like Beatrice's hover chair may have been a nod to Commander Shore's and Professor X's hover chairs from Stingray and X-Men, respectively. <sighs> and so, after five years, no more waiting. No more discussions. No more deliberation. The stage is set for the most personal and biggest rescue of the series. The search and rescue of Jeff Tracy. Next week, it truly begins. Good night from the night.